Super important winning time interview uh, at Panavision Woodland Hills. It's showtime. My name is Todd Van Hazel. I'm a cinematographer and I was the director of photography on Winning Time. Hi, my name is Mikhail Malay Mare and uh, I'm the co cinematographer on Winning Time. Truly, this is really an honor. I mean, even before I knew you, I was a fan of yours for a long time and, and have been inspired by you for a long time. So oh, just getting to know you and you. this whole process has been really beautiful. So thank you as well. What was the hardest part of winning time for you? It took some time to adapt because it's the first time I'm not operating. Like that's why I was like stealing the Super 8 sometimes from Justin. Yeah. <laughs> but, but it took at least a week to realize like, okay, you're fine. You're fine. You don't have to do that. You have other things to, to worry about. That. Yeah. see what, what they bring, and they brought amazing stuff. During the pilot, when was the, the moment you realized that the, the vi visual style you chose is actually working? I feel like from the, during the testing, I feel like I kind of never doubted that it was going to work. I was curious whether we were going to use it as like salt and pepper, mm -hmm. or if it was going to be really integrated into the visual storytelling, and that was kind of out of my hands. I, w I hoped that it would be used as much as it is, I hope that it became like really part of the language and it did. Like the idea too that like what was happening in culture at that time, there was like all this tension in America and all this tension like shift in the country. And the idea that the aesthetic could have that kind of like jarring shift mm -hmm. all the time. Like you're always being confronted with like a new way to see that scene or that character, you know, mm -hmm. especially characters like this, these like icons of our culture and like seeing them you know, with so much bravado on 35 millimeter, you know, on like a crane and all this yeah. like machismo even, and then instantly cutting to like a really vulnerable, really stripped down tube camera shot of the same person, you know, where you can see their flaws. Also, like I remember when, when I saw the pilot for the first time and we were talking, in my mind was like, oh my God, this is brilliant. It's a brilliant way of using archival footage. Mm -hmm. and. What's amazing is that, like, how, if any, like, how much your archival footage? Yeah, most of it we reproduce. I know a lot of it. You there's stuff in the in the title sequence that you did, yeah. like, yeah. that's so amazing that it's like you lose track of, like, you know, it's working if we lose track yeah. of, yeah. like, yeah. which is archival, which is like our archival. Yeah. I mean, maybe that's another reason for the primos too, as well, because then you have like this beautiful 35 millimeter primo base, and then it allowed us to like get uglier with eight millimeter or a Kigami or get like, you know, more beautiful than we needed. Was there any moment you felt you lost creative control on the set? Not that I can recall. I mean, I think winning time for me was an exercise in like kind of letting go, like creating like this wild style that then was designed to kind of surprise even us, you know, and like you're giving these different aesthetics to different operators and we're kind of riffing on it per scene and also like wanting you to take episodes where you weren't just replicating the style, but you and your director were like creating new looks for the show. And like, because that was like the alchemy of it at first, it always felt exciting and successful. And I've never worked with another DP before. So like seeing your dailies was so exciting to me because I realized like, oh, look, they're making the show. And I, I didn't know about that scene they were doing. How cool is that? You know, like it's still the show. It's great, you know? And, I don't know, it's kind of freeing. Letting more talented artists make it theirs ultimately felt really good. It was the first time for me as well, looking like working with, with, with another DP, watching each other's dailies. And it was like yeah. it was such an interesting process because like I was in prep when you were shooting and you're in prep when I was shooting, but we still had time to watch each other's dailies. Yeah. I would do basketball and then you'd have episodes and you would do basketball and we'd get better at it. And then we'd learn, and then I would do it, and we'd get stronger, and then you would do it. Episode seven was major basketball, and you guys learned all this stuff. And then by nine and ten, we had taken those lessons and pulled them further, you know. So I mean, it helped. It helped that we start. We started slow, yeah. and like we started with like small basketball scenes, but also training camp yeah, and street and ball. All that. Training, yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is a three hundred and sixty green screen stage. Uh, the court is real and then the first maybe 15 rows are built something like that on three sides of the arena and then above that is all green screen we knew we were gonna have to shoot multiple arenas through multiple time periods there's like games in the 60s the 70s the 80s so we would switch out the court and we'd switch out the seats and all the other kind of insignias around actually your i love what you guys did on um the boston uh, yeah boston garden 
is so fun because you got to use the parquet floor and because you guys got to light it, you guys chose to do this like super piss yellow, disgusting warm, which feels so good. How did you discover the aerochrome? <laughs> the aerochrome is something that has interested me for a while. I discovered this photographer, Richard Moss, uh, who did these photos using aerochrome uh, of the Congo. The flashbacks in Winning Time were never emotionally manipulative or were there to be shocking or were there to push like the filmmaker's agenda. The different looks and styles always had to serve a function of like loving the characters uh, and helping the audience to empathize more with them. So I had trouble figuring out a look for the flashbacks of Haywood's childhood because it is so painful. And I was curious if Kodak could bring back Aerochrome for us and it wasn't possible. And then Panavision incidentally um, had a solution where I think we used a DXL uh, with the infrared layer removed and then an aerochrome filter and then a lot on top of that to help it look like aerochrome film. I came to Panavision for winning time because of the support, like the creative support. This is like a massive show with all these different looks and multiple cameras. I can email Panavision and say like, I have this idea for a look. What do you guys think? Or like, we have this problem. How can we solve it? This is a clip from episode 10, the season finale, and this is at the Spectrum Arena. And this is uh, the end sequence where magic wins. <laughs> it's where they win. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of the culmination of everything we learned during the entire season. I mean, it's all the different formats. It's how we figured out finally how to shoot basketball using our rollerblade operator, John Light. Who, who, who came up with the idea with John? I, I mean, we were talking a lot about ways to get the camera to stay physically close to the basketball players. And like, there's all the techniques we know about and we talked about like motion control and like things, but it's like, ultimately you have to be able to like move in 3D space with them in a more improvisational way. You you used John in episode two, but uh, my first time using him was in, in the training camp. And I remember I was close to Dave and we did a rehearsal and John started and like immediately went like full speed. And, and Dave was like, like, yep, there's no device that goes faster than John. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's true. Would you agree with me that it was the hardest part of the show was chasing heights? It was unbelievable. There are camera techniques, like it is part of this show. It's not an afterthought. It is like in the DNA, like heights tell the story here. I have a feeling that we both love wide lenses and low angles and like it, it kind of like Every time we were in doubt and we had to avoid all these low and close, just like let's go low yeah, and, and close. Yeah, and it feels right, right anyway. It feels right. Yeah, our AD is something really, really smart. In maybe episode two, where Magic is running, he's at the fish fry at church. Yeah. He's running down the streets. It was a wide shot on Steadicam yeah. of him running, so you can't have any can of shoes, can of apple boxes. So he's running, and basically he decided that all the extras that Magic would pass on his way to his family should be children or short people. Yeah. So we switched all the tall extras and put a bunch of kids and he ran by these kids. And then he arrived at apple boxes that were hidden by the table just as he leaned in to kiss his mom. And you're just like, you know, the, the weaving that has to occur. <laughs> the conversation for the mixed formats began from the beginning, from the first conversation I had with McKay after reading the script, and it was very obvious, I'm sure you would agree when you read the scripts, it's like there's a self-referential quality in the scripts and there's like a kaleidoscopic mixing of like pop culture that's in the scripts and characters are talking to camera in the scripts. It just was very apparent that like this show is built to be experimented with and like it does best when you have artists who are on it who are excited to experiment. It's like take the paintbrushes that we have and then like see what they can do, you know, and like... There was the, the common core visually, but also like there were so many experimenting on on like all the episodes, which was great. McKay always said that even on the pilot, he said like, on this show, if it feels good, we should do it. If it feels right, we should do it. 